Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Dewart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello there, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here with the person who needs no introduction, but I will do my very best Thank nonetheless, you. Senator Karen Spilka. So I want to get it right. Um, Karen is the Massachusetts State Senator of the Democratic Party. She represents the second uh, Middlesex and Norfolk District. And just for reminder, or for those who don't know, that includes the town of Hopkinton, Ashland, Framingham, Franklin, Holliston, Medway, and Natick in the Metro West region of Massachusetts. We're delighted to have you oh, thank with you. your busy schedule. And I might add, and this is a big thing, Karen is also chair of the Ways and Means Committee in the Senate, which is a, a wonderful committee and uh, usually important. Yeah, yeah critically yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> critically important to pay for things. <laughs> awesome. So happy to have you. Thank I'm you for taking so some time. So pleased to now. be here with the three of you. This is great. Uh, awesome. Awesome. But before we get into all the wonderful things that you're doing on Beacon Hill and around the region, let's talk a little bit about you, Karen, um, as a long-term resident of Ashland and a little bit more about um, your kind of life being here uh, before and during your career? Uh, well, my husband and I moved here in, in uh, 1985 um, thinking that we weren't certain moving this far out from the Boston area whether or not we'd stay and we just fell in love with Metro West. Mm -hmm. So we've been here for, for over 30 years and this is our home. This is where we raised my our family, our, t our two sons mm -hmm. who are now adults and one is a teacher, public oh. schools in New York City school system, nice. uh, teaches American history in high school. Mm -hmm. cool. The other one is an engineer and works in construction. So um, they're both self-sufficient, and it, it's great. They, they've, they've, they're doing fine. So that's, awesome. uh, of course. You did your job. I know, I know, <laughs> for the most part. And yeah. they, well, you know, <laughs> always, well, you know. <laughs> and they both graduate from National High School? Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So, um, and I grew, up, I grew up in New York. I grew up mm. in Yonkers, New mm -hmm. York, just north of New York City. Uh, four kids, um, and uh, my sister uh, had Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so that really has impacted. I've been, uh, her legal, I was you her legal, legal guardian, guardian. Mm -hmm. for over 30 years as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my father had mental illness as well growing up as a kid, and he died when I was around 20. So wow. it wasn't surprising when I became a social worker. Okay. I went to school, graduated, became a social worker, moved here to Massachusetts, actually, um, waitressed, and then got a job counseling kids and families. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go into juvenile justice went to Northeastern Law School, came out as a labor and employment attorney, did that oh, for, right. for years, okay. and w became an arbitrator mediator and mm -hmm. specializing in conflict resolution. And that's what I was doing professionally when I ran for state rep back mm -hmm. in 2001. But I had also gotten very involved in uh, the issues of, the, of Ashland and Metro West. I, you were actually on the school committee. Yes, yeah. in the late 1990s wow. yeah. I ran for school committee um, and formed a statewide coalition to lobby the State House. To, and that was my introduction to the State House. Mm -hmm. I hadn't had much contact. Uh, to lobby the State House to change the education funding formula. We felt that Ashland, Framingham, Holliston, Hopkinton, the Metro West communities were not getting their fair share of the education funding, what's called mm -hmm. Chapter 70. Mm -hmm. So I formed a statewide coalition I called the Chapter 70 Roundtable, and we organized and we met and we came up with some consensus as to what we should lobby for and work towards to make it more adequate, equitable, predictable, and simpler, mm -hmm. uh, and when I so that's what when I um, when I uh, found out that my state rep was resigning in 2001, mm -hmm. I thought, wow, I can make better change with that from within the state house than lobbying from outside. So I that was Barbara then, wasn't it? No, no, that was uh, John Stefanini okay. who resigned from. He lives. It was a Framingham seat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for ever, Framingham. Uh -huh. Male seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like we've had some discussion recently in the last few days about male dominated boards and hoping to see those things kind of start changing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if, if you're aware. Uh, last session, um, I had been to this uh, or, uh, organization um, meeting of a lot of the uh, CEOs of the greater Boston companies mm -hmm. um, talking about 
and there, were, there were many women there, many men talking about how do we get more women on the boards of directors of Massachusetts companies because mm -hmm. uh, the record is pretty abysmal. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, right. think, yeah. I think it was Fidelia that just announced their first ever woman CEO this week. Which is about time. <laughs> we passed the resolution with the support of that group and women's organizations and, and you know, a lot of the, the males to mm -hmm. work have steps. It's not mandatory, right. but it's steps as to how you could get mm -hmm. more women in upper level management and then getting onto the boards. Y Absolutely. You know that that's like a passion of mine because I, to me, there's no excuse to not have. Um, diverse and appropriate representation mm -hmm. on all our boards of directors. Um, and if I hear one more time, well, I can't find a qualified fill in the dot, right, right. whether it's an ethnicity or a gender, it's like, then you're right. looking in the wrong right. places. Absolutely. Right. You know. I and do a lot of all there. board development and <sighs> so forth and, and board recruitment. Um, and, you know, one thing I find is organizations need to get clear with themselves of what are they looking for? What do you really need? What's the criteria? Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, it's like the best kept secret in the world, how to be, how to be nominated for a board, how to be part of that mix. Right. I think it's always been women needing to figure out the subtleties of getting into that. But we should be more, I think organizations should be more transparent about what they're looking for, recruiting, um, being more open yeah. about um, what it's what right. they need. So, yeah. so you start state rep. Yeah. And then uh, after three years, my, our state senator um, decided to not run for re-election. So I ran. And so I've been state senator since 2005, oh. starting out as chair on the Committee of Children, Families, and Persons with Disabilities, which knowing mm -hmm. my background, yeah. you know, it, it was a it wonderful. Was part of your heart. Oh, God, yeah. And um, I'm still really involved with that. I mean, our children are our future, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, and then was chair of economic development during mm -hmm. the downturn. So yes. reformed a lot of state government, made it more efficient, more effective, mm -hmm. um, and created the Mass Growth right. Capital Corp to, to <laughs> loan money. Um, and uh, then was Majority Whip, and now I'm chair of wow. Ways and Means. What does Majority Whip mean? Yeah. Uh, it helps talk to people if we're planning bills, say it was an economic development bill, uh, going around to the other senators, asking if they have any questions, if they have any concerns, mm -hmm. uh, meeting with them, and just seeing if we, we can resolve any issues or concerns that they may have so we can move it through the Senate and send it to the House. It's almost like the, the public needs some sort of translation card for some of these titles, like whip. You know, right. What I've learned about has been on, the, on House of Cards. <laughs> you know, the, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> the Massachusetts it's legislature is <laughs> not on the House of Cards. Um, I, I watch it and I think, oh, oh my, my God, God this is I like, <laughs> how yeah. did they come up with this? Right? I know, I know, I know. Even on the federal level, I right. would hope it's not, not anything that dysfunctional. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not well, what yeah. Are, talk about some of the successes and, and, and some of the, the goals that you have set up to yeah. accomplish and what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for me right now, being chair of Ways and Means has really reinvigorated me. Um, starting out as a social worker, I really feel like my job has, con has always been helping people, mm -hmm. you know, even at, as in, in the rep or as a senator. Um, so as chair of Ways and Means, I meet with all of my senators. I meet with uh, advocacy groups and organizations hear about their districts and try to strike a balance, particularly in tough economic times, how much do we have to disperse in the, in the budget of new funds and, and old funds and how much is needed. And that is the hardest thing because there's so many needs across the state you hear mm. of babies, of children, the pediatric palliative care. If you don't oh. fully fund that, mm -hmm. they may not be alive next year. It's mm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you, you want to try to fully fund that and, and education because that's, you know, our mm -hmm. future and seniors and veterans and our communities. Yes. I mean, it's, it's really hard. So you, and then targeted, I believe that we still need to do targeted investments in economic development mm -hmm. because that's planning for the future to hopefully yes. let our pot of revenue kind of grow. Is, right. Yeah, yes. so, so that... that that really does keep me up during budget time. So we, the, the governor comes out with his budget in January. The House does their budget. 
in April, we do ours in May. So if people don't see me as much in mm -hmm. mostly April, May, June, we, we have conference committee where we resolve the differences. Mm -hmm. And then July, you know, we, if the governor vetoes, like the House did overrides this past week, they came to us, I'll be reviewing them, making recommendations, mm -hmm. what if any we should be overriding as well. And, and um, you know, in close touch with the Secretary of Administration and Finance, what mm -hmm. is our revenue numbers, what's happening. And the, and the Senate president. So, um, so that is something that, that I, I really try to keep in mind and going back to my roots of you know, creating resilient children mm -hmm. so they can weather whatever it is in their lives they have to weather and stay healthy uh, and, and create com resilient communities and I believe a resilient commonwealth. So when you of, have, absolutely. You know, that's at like a huge 30,000 foot level. Then when you come down to our own district, those always have to be in the back of your mind, like, wow, I know if I do this, I'm helping, you know, this school in Natick. I'm helping, you know, yes. these people in Framingham. I'm helping, you know, thank the Yanks. I'm helping these. Yeah, and that's why, you know, before we do budget, um, I meet with the superintendent, the town mm -hmm. manager, the, mm -hmm. the, the board of selectmen, the school committee, and finance, and just a lot of people. My, my uh, district peach people, Pooja Mehta and Dennis Giambetti. She's Betty, awesome. Uh, I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, meet with, with people so we know what the town needs. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why in the past few years, I've included funding for the substance abuse program, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. community substance abuse program, because to me, we focused on opioid addiction and prevention and treatment and education on a statewide level, but we need to keep it going on the community level yeah. where, you know, parents, community members, kids, exactly, it's, it's right at the roots of it. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, right so I, I've, inser I've inserted funding for that the last three years and some funding for the schools, if there's a special program that they mm -hmm. want to uh, institute, but just don't quite have that funding mm -hmm. for seed to get it going, you know, I can try to insert funding there or other mm -hmm. things. Sometimes, um, you know, if it's transportation issues and there's a transportation bond bill, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's easier for, for me to, to push to get it in the bill. Um, you know, in, in bonding or other things to keep in mind what's going on in Hopkinton. So mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of things I know on the table. I know healthcare is one of them. Um, and now I'm going to forget the, the list. Criminal justice Criminal reform. Justice reform. Uh, so general. on the table, meaning top priorities for you at right this time? Right now that I'm yeah, working, the Senate, mm -hmm. um, before the end of the year, um, at least two of the major bills that I have direct involvement mm -hmm. is health care reform. I'm part of a working six member in the Senate working group. If you remember, um, Governor Baker came out with a health reform package in, mm -hmm. the, in late June, just as mm -hmm. we were negotiating the, the conference committee. The House had done its budget, the Senate did its budget, and some things we might agree with of it, some things not. It, had, it did not have a hearing. Uh, we were hearing from a lot of advocates, patients' rights, has, a lot of folks that they were concerned. So we did not include it in the budget. But the Senate has been working on a health care reform cost containment mm. for eight months already. Mm -hmm. We've been working with the Millbank Foundation. <coughs> we've gone to Minnesota. We've met with mm. Washington, Oregon, uh, Maryland. This past week, we were up in Vermont. So you're not doing it in a vacuum. You're taking Correct. best practices right. from Correct. all pictures around. Are you up in Vermont. Correct. And targeting. So we will come out with a report the end of this month mm. with a piece of legislation, draft legislation attached, which we will file. Um, and my, my, you know, I've been heavily involved in the drafting of it. And we will look at both private commercial insurance, how ways to cut down, like decreasing readmissions. That is a concern in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Some mm -hmm. states are ahead of us. Yeah. What can we do to decrease somebody has a cardiac episode, they, they're in the hospital, they go home, and they, they, they panic, they call the ambulance, the ambulance then has to take them back to the hospital. Is there a way some states will um, automatically, you go home, they send a specialized right. person to mm -hmm. check up on them, yeah. Th things like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, from readmissions to some pharmaceutical issues we're looking at, I mean, behavior, I mean, health, mental health mm -hmm. issues. I mean, with some of that, though, is also coming down to insurance and saying, you know, you have to have a minimum, you know, if you, different criteria you meet, like if you're only being billed at a three or a four, you're getting, you might be able to stay an extra night. If you're down at a one or a two, you're going home. But you may still, the 
they're not sometimes taking the whole patient into account. It's like, wait a second, right. this person's going home alone, is a fall risk, exactly. is this, mm -hmm. and then being able to say, okay, we need to keep that person a minimum of three days because we need to make sure that they're stable on the fe their feet, they could get to the bathroom, they could get to a phone. Right, and maybe we need more support systems when they right. do yeah, go home. Because right. Right. that is still cheaper yeah. than having them the readmitted right. as an right. inpatient. Or so, stay three days just right. because they need extra help. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we're looking at, at healthcare and we, I, I think it will be a very significant bill. Right. So that's exciting. And then criminal justice reform mm -hmm. we're looking at as well and we will be Pro passing that bef in the Senate mm -hmm. before the year is out, uh, looking at bail reform mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just uh, uh, mandatory minimums and mm -hmm. um, also what can we do afterwards, diversion both pre and post right. and supervision, more supervision. Mm -hmm. And um, I filed a juvenile justice omnibus mm -hmm. bill mm -hmm. uh, that will be included in the Senate version of it that will really I think help juveniles tremendously so, too. Excellent. Excellent explain work. a little bit because I think here we all get why this is needed, but particularly things like bail reform, you know, and and that there is such a dichotomy between, um, you know, if you do something minor but can't afford your bail, what can happen to you, and right. what has happened right. in your state, it feels and like how this socioeconomic. You know, exactly. Well, it, it's focus. two, yeah. and that, yeah. those are our fines or fees that we're also looking mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. um, which I get involved in being chair of ways and means. If we decrease some of the fines or fees, like one grouping of that could be $11 million. So the state, which we're having tough fiscal times yeah. now, do we do it? Do we phase it in so mm -hmm. that it's not a hit in all one, one year? Um, things like that we're, we're discussing. but. Um, like bail is, is an area, it's implemented so differently, and it was very whole, all of the statutes were written over years, and it is so confusing. I was chair of the domestic violence bill a few years mm. back, prevention mm. bill, and it involved some bail and dangerousness hearings and what was involved, and it was so confusing. Be, and we realized then we need to rewrite the statute and make it so that it's clearer because it's almost in some ways incomprehensible. So people in courts over time and, and DAs and defense attorneys have, have this, you know, statutes, a series of statutes that have been interpreted. Some jurisdictions apply it one way, some another way. So we need something more consistent. It shouldn't be where you live that makes a difference. It should mm -hmm. be consistent, uniform, clear, Right. You know, and fair. Right. right. Yeah. Not an emotional. I know that, um, and you've probably discussed it with Muriel too, is that Muriel Kramer, you know, just got her master's in criminal justice, but ma mainly focused on bail reform. Mm. And so she's part of an organization that actually goes out and helps post bails for people who can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So she may be in Dorchester one day, she may be in some, but most of it seems that she's drawn into the city mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that um, she's like, you know, I've had to go in and pay you know, a $25 bail and someone's been there two nights because they right. didn't get well, some right. They, they and honestly, get these aren't, these aren't um, people that, I mean, obviously you keep bad people, scary people, you know, harmful people. Well, yeah. anyone that right. would have but a $25, yeah. $100 bill. Hasn't bail hasn't done much in you know, between. Right. You know. And then you have people who just get out of prison who yeah. we impose uh, a fee upon to supervise them. Uh, for some of them, and if they're just out of prison, where are they supposed to get, get their the money? money? Right, right. So it's almost like, well, okay, you're just out of prison, so you're going to end up going back. So, so we need to work this out. So hopefully, this bill will will also be a, a significant bill yeah. to make changes. Yeah. What else? What um, else is going on? That we should be thinking about here in Hopkinton, or anything you want to let everybody know that um, should be, we should have on our minds up, or coming or, up? Or? Well, the other thing that, that I'm personally working on is um, and, and in hearing from sort of grassroots coming from my district school committees and, and students, uh, I have an initiative, a Metro West you know, Students Initiative on Social and Emotional Learning. Mm. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had major forums for that. We've had experts from across the country come out. It's free. We have school committees coming in, I think, within the next week or two in the State House because out of that outgrowth, school committees wanted to have better communication amongst mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So my district, we're, um, we're, my office is pulling that together, and that's very exciting. I also have a youth council where okay. Hopkinton has a middle yeah. school student and a high school student, and they come, we nice. talk, we give them a tour. Every year we get a new group in. Uh, we, um, they're advisory, so we talk yes. about issues coming up, 
And it's good to get the young people involved. Exactly. Yeah. Civic yeah. engagement right. is really important, which mm -hmm. I think we're going to do a civic engagement bill, mm -hmm. too, actually. Cool. Um, yeah, and um, they pick one of my bills and look at it and, and give an argument for or against or ideas for, and it, that's the last session. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And where my office is also working on um, October. For, every year we have a se an annual senior health and wellness fair mm -hmm. where we have booths. We have a, it's a lot of resources for basically for seniors living well, living longer. For the district. For the district, yeah. So where do you host that? Uh, at Keefe Tech. We have so that's over very three, central. Yeah, yeah, and we, I offer if um, you know, say Franklin or Midway seniors can't get there, or even Hopkinton. If mm -hmm. anybody who is listening to this in my district, uh, uh, which again, first four towns of the marathon, that's how I say <laughs> it: Hopkinton, <laughs> Ashland, Framingham, Natick, and then swinging south along mm -hmm. 495. Holliston, Midway into Franklin. Mm -hmm. If any senior wants to, to come, they can contact their, their senior center, Council on Aging. We will pay for a bus mm. to bring people to, to Keep Tech. It's October 14th. Right, it's wow. free. What time uh, is it? At? It starts at like 8.39 mm -hmm. and, and it goes to about one. We have Perfect. many resource booths for people mm -hmm. to get information. Healthcare information, uh, estate information. We'll get the website link up on okay. the show and, and post it. And then it. we have uh, workshops as well from, you know, making your own garden, you know, shelf bonsai to oh. uh, <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm not quite a senior, but I'm getting close. Can I, can I go? <laughs> Yoga. <laughs> will, you have, will you be you having know. flu shots at that? Yeah, we have Because that's flu. actually hugely important in a right. draw for them. That's wow. where every year I get my flu shot. There, you know, yeah. And we do sometimes have osteoporosis testing mm, and great. bone density and other things. So if anybody is interested, we can get it on the website. Call my office. Ask for Pooja mm -hmm. Mehta. She's the one that's mostly Rocks. organizing it. Yeah. And it's a tremendous. And then we provide lunch. Um, and then we have a They always like free lunch. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. I just volunteered at Carolyn's uh, Dykema's um, picnic for like the <laughs> fifth year in a row. That they show up for lunch. Right, Let them right, know there's right. free lunch. Right. Oh, they, they, know. they know. This is probably a dumb question, but not this really. This is my like eleventh or twelfth year yeah. doing this. <laughs> so we talk about you know senior gatherings. Senior, what are the eight? Who's a senior these days? I mean, I think a lot of us are having just had a birthday. I mean, I don't think we always Today think about ourselves. Happy birthday! Thank you. I mean, I just discovered this this summer when I went to the movies with my brother that, you know, I qualified for a senior discount. I'm like, what? what? When? Ah. <laughs> you, you just don't th take it. I, well, I do now. You can get I a free that. donut every day with your AARP card. That's what's <laughs> turned 50. But it's you know, I let school. people self-identify. Right. But, so but, if but, anybody comes, they're welcome. But it's typically, I mean, people, anybody over 40, over 50, I mean, what's a senior? I anymore? don't think 40. <laughs> I mean, I don't either. I think I'm young and, and, and I'm, I'm over <laughs> Well, you're in the world of work. If you're over 45, you're in a right. protected class. Right, so right, I don't know what right. makes a person a senior. So, but, so yeah. that's coming up on October 14th. Tomorrow's a huge day in Hopkinton. Yes. But and it's, it's a Saturday. huge day in the district. But that's yeah. actually, uh, you, people don't realize you're on 24-7. Oh mm -hmm. I mean, I was at something yesterday and had just missed you. And you were, you were speaking at the Sheraton Terror. Then you spoke there the day before. When so we know sleep? tomorrow is Poly Arts and Family Day. So, and that's all over everywhere in Tompkins. Tell us what your day is on a right. Saturday morning like this, because I know what's going on across the district <laughs> a little bit. To, yeah, all the fun <laughs> stuff tomorrow. Uh, well, you know, I get up early. I will be in Holliston. It's Celebrate Holliston Day, um, where they have lots of booths and vendor, vendors in Goodwill Park. And a parade. There's a parade. Ah. So uh, I'll be at uh, Holliston probably around 8 um, at uh, the Placentino Sino Elementary School, where right. the parade starts. We, we all march to the Goodwill Park. Um, my booth will be there. Uh, if anybody needs information, they come and they stop by. So it's a great way to meet people. And then we give, they have a, a man and woman of, of the, the year. year. So we mm -hmm. give cool. citations. I stay there for a little bit. And then I scoot over to Ashland because it's also That's Ashland, Ashland Day. day. <laughs> um, so they are kind. They used to give the citations at 10. They now wait till 11, which is better anyway because there are more people there. And that's also a terrific day where mm -hmm. And that's a huge and, turnout. Yes. I mean, uh, <laughs> it, it takes over every last stitch of Stone Park. Uh. Yes, and there's vendors and booths of all the town, similar to Celebrate Holliston, where mm -hmm. all of the town organizations and committees right. have booths. And um, 
Yes. yes, and there's an amusement for the kids, the, right. you know, jumping booth yeah, and the, whatever, the, all, the, all yeah. that stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'm there for a while, and then I'll come here to go, you know, poly visit arts. the Poly oh. Arts Day. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, later on, I'll try to get to uh, Family Fun Day at the high school. You're not too exhausted. So, <laughs> yes. And it's, yes. this is almost, I mean, this is an exception for tomorrow in some ways that there's so many times, but this is almost atypical Saturday for you where you go from one event to another, whether right. it's an Eagle Sound Ceremony, a memorial <laughs> thing, a veterans <laughs> thing, <laughs> to, <laughs> so anyway, what's, isn't Celebrate Natick next week too? That was last that week. That was last <laughs> week. That was last week, but it was also the Holliston senior annual big fair that I stopped oh, off at wow. and then um, it's never there ended. Was something in Ashland in the and, and there was a conference you were at yesterday and there's things coming up and and then you have to work <laughs> <laughs> yeah although I mean it's a great way to stay in touch with people to see you people to hear what talk. the issues yeah, are right, and really exactly. listen to them and mm -hmm. and um, so it's either something that's concerning or sometimes people will say they need help you know, so uh, it's a great way to, to stay in touch. Well, this gives people a flavor of, you know, what it's like to have a career like this. You wow. Know, while you are an elected official and so forth, but the work you had to do to build up to that. Right. Um, you know, we talked about politicians, but I like to think about people as legislators more so. Once you're elected, you're a legislator, you are governing. And that's public a service. Public service yeah. Yeah. And, and all of that. And it's, it's quite a calling. And um, thank you. Yeah. I, mean, it, it's oh, not I still the, love it. I still think, uh, consider myself incredibly blessed and very you're, lucky. But you it's know. not for everybody. No. And I have, have to, to tell you. enjoy being out there talking to people. And, and you've, been, you've it's very hard much work. grasped It's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it should be hard work, though. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. you know right. there are times where you know, people don't know who their senator is or their rep or whatever. In this community, it's different. I think everyone knows off the top of if you ask them who their state senator is, they know who you are. Right. And so like that, because you've actually embraced being part of the community, mm -hmm. things like that. Oh, and you. I think, you know, a lot of it has done, like, the passion for the children. You also have a big passion for animals. Oh, I heard, oh I heard, right. she's I heard a rescue doggy. <laughs> right, I heard right. Thank, thank you for Thank you. Absolutely. Thank thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday, Cheers. Patricia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. My name is Margie Wiggin, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us.